the Bison Basketball Show with NDSU head coaches Dave Richmond and Jory Collins. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. And Pepsi. Welcome into another edition of the Bison Basketball Show. As always, Rob Pip here. And starting today with women's head basketball coach Jory Collins. Coach, as always, good to see you. How have you been? Been good, Rob. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Well, we go back and kind of look just one game this past week and getting to play on Saturday up in Grand Forks versus North Dakota. I know a very a tough matchup for your squad and not able to find the victory in that game, but just wanted to start and lead in talking about that single game this week. Just your takeaways. Yeah, you know, a big rivalry game, a whole week to prepare for it, you know, with it being our bye week. And uh, obviously we're hoping to, to get the outcome that we wanted uh, and didn't. Uh, you know, they had a great environment. Uh, they were really ready to play. Uh, and I thought our team was just a tad bit sluggish in the first half. Um, I thought we competed. I thought we played okay in the first half. And as we'll get to it, I think the start of the third quarter, um, you know, they were able to separate to 8, 10, 12, and then it was a dogfight for us uh, the rest of the game. It was hard going offensively uh, for us early um, and, and just needed a little bit more intensity and maybe a little bit more urgency in some moments in that game. Just taking a look at some of the highlights here and you know I always try to find some silver lining even in a loss. These girls trailed by 19 in the fourth but they battled back with get within single digits. Just how impressed were you with that fight to try to get back into that game especially in the fourth. Yeah there's you know even when we don't play well there's no, there's nothing about our uh, players competitiveness that I ever questioned. Uh, I knew we'd hang in you know we started uh, pressuring a little bit more later, made enough plays to cut it to seven um, late. Uh, so I loved our fight. Uh, you know, we had a group out there that was hanging in till the end um, and just couldn't make enough plays to get it closed. We had some opportunities to really get it shrunk, uh, but just uh, too much to overcome. Uh, in the third quarter. Heaven Hamling seems to be that player that we talk about time in and, and time out. She had a game high 28 points along with seven rebounds, two steals and a block. She's been playing at such a high level. Coach, how does she continue to keep that going game in and game out? Well, I just keep, you know, it, with her, it, it never changes. It's her competitiveness. Um, you know, she plays at 100% uh, the entire time. Uh, even in big moments when you need her, she always shows up. Uh, the effort is relentless, uh, you know, from her. Uh, and I think her teammates feed off that a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we needed more than, than her. I thought Abby Schulte played a good game in this game, too. But uh, we didn't get enough, you know, in the, in the paint in this particular game uh, out of our group. And um, we didn't play good enough team defensively either to give up 82 on the road is always going to be tough to overcome. Abby Schulte, as you just mentioned, finishing up with 12 points in this matchup versus UND. Just what did you tell the girls after the game? Well, we were disappointed. We were disappointed in our effort uh, in a couple areas of the game. I thought we got out-rebounded uh, to a team that we felt like we should win on the glass. Uh, we turned the ball over too much. Those are not recipes for winning on the road against a good team that's really fired up to play you. Um, and so we gotta, we're got we going to watch it today uh, or, or on Monday and, and get that uh, figured out a little bit and then start preparing for this week. You know, when you go back and, and you look at this game and this, this team has really came together this year. We've talked a lot about just their success and they've had tremendous success, but how quickly are they able to respond? I know you said you'll go through, you'll look at some tape today, but just kind of quickly yeah, do you think, respond and then kind of wrap it up and you move know, ahead. For, for this group, this has been, that's been one of the things I've appreciated most about them is how they've responded to maybe some adversity and things not going well. Um, you know, you don't want those things to happen very often, but you also know as a competitor and at this environment and this level, you're not winning every game. Uh, and you got to be able to learn from each one and bounce back. Uh, I expect us to have a good week of practice and be ready to go on Thursday. Never want to get the losses, but it's always teaching moments too. How do you utilize these games in a, in a teaching scenario? Yeah, you know, especially for us, we have eight new players this year. We have some young players playing. Uh, a lot of minutes. The more the season goes on, the more film there is on you, particularly as a player, your strengths, your weaknesses show up more and more and you have to learn to adapt and you got to make adjustments and you got to understand how people are playing you. So the things that you can learn on a daily basis from every game and every practice, uh, you know, it's endless uh, and, and how much you can absorb and then take into the next game. Uh, it, it really determines how much better you can get. Uh, so we try to take each one of those opportunities to learn from uh, every time we get to compete and, and come out and be better for it. 
Well, we'll wrap this one up with this game. We'll look ahead here coming up in just a few moments to more games on the road. We'll step aside, take a break, up more with women's head basketball coach Jory Collins when we return on the Bison Basketball Show. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. A better way of life is better days off and better nights in. Better hellos and better goodbyes. With locally approved financed and serviced home loans, Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Are you looking for an opportunity to work in an exciting and innovative environment? WDAY-TV is hiring. Be a part of a locally owned award-winning station. All current job openings can be found at forumcom.com slash careers. We're a leading media and technology company with a core culture of values and perks like competitive PTO, benefits, and more. Join our team of people whose passion and purpose is fueled by collaboration and innovation. WDAY-TV. Build your career here. For the best sports coverage, turn to the home of local sports, WDAY. For exclusive live games, analysis, and much more, there are more ways to watch than ever before. Turn to WDAY and WDAY Extra or subscribe online to WDAY Sports Plus. For up-to-the-minute content you won't find anywhere else. Available on Inforum.com. Don't miss a minute of the action on the home of local sports, WDAY. Another rock and roll weekend. <laughs> Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> On the Bison Basketball Show here and Coach, uh, again, talking to women's head basketball coach Jory Collins. First matchup coming up this week, uh, back at home. Good to be back at the Shill Center as you'll battle South Dakota. What are you looking forward to in this matchup? Well, always being at home. The Shaq's been good to us this year and, and obviously have some monster games this week. Uh, you know, South Dakota was a really hard, hard fought game when we played at their place, came down to the last minute uh, of a game, and, and we're lucky to pull that one out. Uh, obviously, going to be a tall task to do that again Thursday, but we're excited to be playing that one at home. Uh, and then SDSU, when you look at them, they've just been uh, tremendous all year long um, and, and are one of the best mid-major teams and maybe one of the best teams in the country just with their experience uh, and talent. So have our hands full this week, but obviously two really exciting games and looking forward to competing. Yeah, and as you just mentioned, South Dakota State, that game coming up on Saturday. And do you kind of feel like, you know, these are rivalry games. You're, you, we always joke around and say that state to the south, but two very good programs as well. Uh, what are you looking forward to in this SDSU match? Yeah, I think, it, I think we have a great, you know, dynamic here in the Dakotas with South Dakota State, South Dakota, North Dakota. Just, you know, that name, the Dakota name and that and, and, and the success of all the teams that they've had. Um, it just makes that for a fun kind of interstate rivalry right there. And, uh, you know, we're happy to be a part of that and excited about it. Um, but I think it's the quality of the competition and the quality of the teams that make it so great. Uh, and like I said, they're, they've been tremendous for a long time. We're going to have to play at a really high level on Saturday. Uh, to give ourselves a chance, but I know we're up to the task. Well, as you mentioned, the nation, Bison Nation, shows up huge as always. Make a lot of noise. Those tickets at GoBison.com, you can get those tickets there. Coach, we may have mentioned this last week, too, and I, I know that we have talked about it off camera and, and just in passing, but it's crazy to think. Summit League action, you're already over that halfway hump. What's really been impressive to you with the success of this team so far this season? Yeah, I think what I've enjoyed most probably is just we've talked about mixing in a lot of new players and having eight new players on our team and the way they've kind of gelled together uh, and the, the playing chemistry that we've been able to find in a short amount of time, I think is something that I've been really pleased with. You know, we're far from perfect and there's stretches of games where it doesn't go great for us, uh, but they've always responded to coaching. They've responded to their teammates in a positive way uh, and we've continued to grow and get a little bit better together. Uh, throughout the year. So uh, I'm enjoying coaching this group uh, because they want to get better uh, and they're very coachable. It's just it's been fun so far. We we're obviously trying to win every time out and, and highly competitive, but uh, 
they've uh, been just been fun uh, to work with this year. Again, here with women's head basketball coach Jory Collins on the Bison Basketball Show. Hey, coach, you know, we talked about the loss in the previous segment, and this team continues to rally on and build upon success. Just where are some areas, though, that you feel like, hey, this is some things that we've really got to work on as we go down the final stretch here? Yeah, so there's some areas where we've been up and down, and consistency is something I think coaches talk about, you know, all the time. In particular, against North, I, uh, we didn't play into the post very well. Uh, last weekend, we didn't get enough post touches and, and baskets in and around the rim. Uh, we were relying on jump shots and, uh, and some tough contested shots. Uh, being able to utilize, I love our post depth. We've talked about our fours and fives with Abby Draper and Taylor Brown and, and Hildebrand and Binky and Christina. Uh, of being a good group and we got to utilize those those guys a little bit more often give them some more opportunities offensively in and around the basket uh, I think that would help uh, you know just make us a little more versatile on the offensive end we know a lot of newcomers new faces on this team this season speaking of those new faces the newcomers how are they starting to settle into their roles I, th I think really well um, you know we've had some you know L Evans has come out as a freshman and, and really established herself as uh, somebody who's playing a ton of minutes um, and, and being pretty effective for us as a freshman. Uh, it, you know, from all newcomers and freshmen, especially when you're young, it's a little bit of a roller coaster. Uh, but that roller coaster is starting to even out a little bit and, and become a little bit smoother uh, track. Um, we've had people get more comfortable, uh, like Christina and what her role is and how she can uh, come in and just provide a, you know, a spark of energy just about every time out. So uh, they're figuring it out. It's not like it's perfect on a daily basis, but um, uh, it, it's starting to come together. Has there been any areas so far this season, Coach, where you just kind of stepped back and said, wow, I didn't expect that? Yeah, there's been there's been a couple times, uh, you know, I, I don't want to harp on L, but just, you know, how well she's done as a freshman and the impact she's had. We we thought really highly of her, thought she could come in and, and, and play at a high level. Uh, but how quickly she's adjusted to the college game is something that probably took me a little bit by surprise. Uh, obviously a pleasant surprise because it's been it's been really good for our team. Uh, but her adjustment from high school to college has been uh, just on the fast track and has been really nice to see. Just wanted to give you an opportunity here on the final question just to highlight some of your support staff. What have those folks meant to your program and how do they help you on a day to day basis? Yeah, I, I love our staff this year. We have two new assistant coaches and, and having, uh, you know, Jamie Adams, who's a former player, uh, you know, my age with the family, just, you know, being able to have experiences and share those with our team and our players, uh, not only life experiences because of you know her maturity and age but also the playing experience that she had right here in our at our very own university so that's been tremendous uh, Michaela Everett has come in and been exactly what our team needed as far as a sounding board for our players uh, she provides them with daily uh, you know help in all areas uh, that those guys need uh, and I, I think she's just be, become really comfortable with them uh, which makes my job easier uh, and we work really well together uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, Coach, as always, appreciate your time. Keep up the excellent work with, that you do with these young women. And again, those tickets on sale, you can get them at GoBison.com. We'll step aside, take a break. We'll switch gears. We'll talk a little men's basketball. As head coach Dave Richmond joins us on the other side, this is the Bison Basketball Show. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack loves sports. And since he banks at Gate City Bank, he can show his spirit right on his debit card. Even better, Gate City Bank will donate $10 to his favorite local school. And when Jack's friends cheer on their favorite teams, those schools receive $10 too. Plus, Jack and his friends score every day with free ATMs worldwide. Now that's always a win. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Your local news informs and inspires. We share your stories of sorrow and hope. The stories that entertain, educate, and engage. Your news at five starts. We now. record the past and reveal the future. We tell the stories of your community with local news. 
When it matters most, turn to the most watched, most trusted news team in the region. The news leader, WDAY News. More people turn to WDAY News. First on the scene for breaking news and major local stories. The best coverage of local weather, taking the guesswork out of your forecast. Everything you need to know. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News, weeknights at 6 and 10. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Rob Pipp here, now joined by NDSU men's basketball head coach Dave Richmond. Coach, good to see you. It's a little chilly this week. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you know, packed the coat this morning and uh, ready to roll for a week. Yeah. Welcome to Fargo. The, the environment never never fails us. Well, it does certainly feel like winter outside, but as we always joke around, the temperature is always optimal inside the gymnasium. 72 degrees and sunny as we'll go back and look at the one game of the week on a Friday versus North Dakota as Bison men's basketball taking care of business in this matchup. Back on that win column in a 91 to 75 victory. Coach, every win is important. Just how how much does this one really stand out, though, to get back into that win column? Yeah, I think that's the key, Rob. It was it was certainly good to bounce back, especially in our home confines. And and I, I need to make sure and give a shout out to to our marketing people and, and uh, Wes Offerman, our communication staff, and, and most importantly, Bison Nation, and in particular our, our students. Uh, we've had some terrific environments, and we felt like we didn't do our part the last weekend uh, in, in against ORU in Kansas City to uh, to celebrate the environment that we had but we certainly had a terrific environment on on, on Friday night and, and our guys really responded I was not pleased uh, and I mentioned this on WDAY at, at halftime with who we were uh, defensively in, in the first half uh, we were certainly on point offensively uh, went into the locker room and, and refocused and, and got got better uh, made it a priority to what our priorities need to be and that's defending rebounding taking care of the ball and and you can see that that's Bison basketball at its best right there to Javis Miller where our, our defense is leading to our offense and, and we finished the half uh, in, in a pretty good manner except for this last play here uh, but you know all in all a, a good stepping stone and uh, something that gets us back on the right track to an important weekend on the road. A lot of guys stepping up huge in this contest. We'll talk about them here in just a few moments. Andrew Morgan, though, not in this ball game as he was spending time with family during a tough situation there. Yeah, a lot of perspective in this game, Rob. And, and you know, we, we wore shirts to um, to honor and highlight a couple of tough circumstances that the UND players are going through. Uh, but also in, internally, one of our own, uh, where Andrew's uh, grandmother passed away on Tuesday morning of last week. And uh, rightfully so. He was back with his family to, you know, celebrate the life of his grandmother, and, and he was uh, honored to be a Paul Bear. So, um, again, yeah, a lot of perspective, uh, but also, you know, there, there's, there's a game, you know, and that's the callous part about this deal and the results-oriented business, and our, our guys were able to focus in and lock in and get the result we wanted. Grant Nelson finishing up a career-high 36 points, and just from my perspective, broadcasting the game on the radio side as I was watching that, it, it really felt to me like this maybe was the most comfortable game that Grant had where he just found a lot of rhythm, a lot of success. Just kind of your thoughts on his play. Well, a couple of those highlights make me, uh, you know, probably what a young Rob Hip looked like back in the day, hanging on the on the rim and, and those things. But uh, Grant Nelson is a, a terrific young man, and there's been a lot of attention, a lot of buzz going on around Grant. And what I've been most pleased with is he's still focused and prioritized Bison basketball and winning games. And um, you know, he gets 36, but it's an efficient 36. And, as crazy as that sounds and so um, again uh, credit to, to Grant but also he'll be the first to to deflect and, and you know his teammates are making plays around him they're getting the ball in the right places they're also making shots too and that opens up the space for Grant uh, to go to work. You mentioned some of the setbacks with the defense and then highlighted the success of the offense there shooting 55 almost uh, 55 and a half percent uh, season high from the field what was leading to just that good shooting for the Bison in this world? I think we're, we're playing the right way we're playing through uh, playing through the Post. We're playing with good pace. I think something that we've got to continue to do better at is is, is highlight our, our um, capabilities and, and strengths that we have in transition, something where we're out getting stops and leading to our offense a little bit. Uh, the other key, too, is, is Josh Strite was terrific. And Josh uh, created some extra possessions being on the offensive glass for us, so 
Um, all in all, just a good 40 minutes of basketball besides um, you know, a little bit of a lackluster defensive effort in the first half. In that win, the Bison improved now 16-6 and six in 22 games versus UND. What's really led to the success versus the Fighting Hawks over these years? No, I don't. I don't know necessarily what it is with, with them, but um, you know, certainly probably a little bit of a, a heightened focus uh, with the rivalry game and in-state game, and uh, you know, we got some in-state flavor on on our on our um, on our roster, including myself. You know, being from Wapton, you got guys from Jamestown and in, in Devil's Lake, so um, it's it's a big game. But we, we need to make sure and, and have that same intensity focus, Rob, uh, for all of our games. You mentioned Joshua Stride earlier and hauling in eight rebounds, three offensive rebounds just in that first half alone, and. Again, it, it seems like every week we're talking about some of the same guys now as far as them starting to find their place. And then to Javis Miller, 10 points. He had a pretty well-rounded game as well. He was shooting great in this one. Well, I think that's the big thing is finding consistency. And, and uh, we, we didn't have the consistency last week for, for stretches. Uh, we didn't have the consistency in the first half defensively. Uh, we, we've got to find that consistency for 40 minutes as, as we move forward. And, and it takes all guys, uh, Josh Streit to Javis Miller, um, every, everybody locked in. We'll step aside and take a break, and when we come back, Logan Campbell, she sits down with Bowden Skunberg. More to come on the Bison Basketball Show. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack has a debit card from Gate City Bank. However, it looks like a little night ninja took off with his card, as they sometimes do. <laughs> but lucky for Jack, he can freeze his missing debit card with the tap of his mobile app. And even if his card is stolen or lost for good, he can go to any Gate City Bank location to get a new card issued instantly. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Inform has been your trusted local news source for more than 130 years. We are committed to providing our community with local news that's relevant, trustworthy, and accurate. But what sets us apart is our unique understanding of the Fargo-Moorhead community, because it's our community too. Get local news that works for you at Inforum.com. For the best sports coverage, turn to the home of local sports, WDAY. For exclusive live games, analysis, and much more, there are more ways to watch than ever before. Turn to WDAY and WDAY Extra or subscribe online to WDAY Sports Plus for up-to-the-minute content you won't find anywhere else. Available on Inforum.com. Don't miss a minute of the action on the home of local sports, WDAY. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Junior guard Bowden Skunberg has been a steady player for NDSU men's basketball. WDAY's Logan Campbell walks 94 feet with a veteran player about his new roles this season. I'm Logan Campbell here with one of the captains of this NDSU men's basketball team, Bowden Scumberg. Bowden, we're going to walk 94 feet, get to know you a little bit better. It's UND week. You were recruited. Your first offer is from UND. You came to NDSU. Does this game have any added meaning to you? I mean, there's definitely a lot of outside noise going into this game, but, you know, our job is to look at it just like any other game and just come in with that same, same energy. It's like we do every other game. You are a leader on this team. What are some of the challenges that Dave Richmond expects out of you each week? You know, just continue being a leader every game. You know, a lot of young guys on the team. So it's important for me to like lead them and you know, just give them some advice every game. Has it been hard for you to transition into this leader role? You know, you're coming in here, we had a lot of great leaders like Tyree, Rocky, and Sam, and they did a really good job of you know, showing me like how it was done. And I feel like I've been you know, trying to do a good job carrying over what they've been doing. It's a Friday game. How do you feel about Friday games, first of all? Oh, I'm, I'm excited for any game, no matter what day it is, so. That's awesome. Um, you talk about being a leader for the younger guys. Are there any of the younger guys that have surprised you so far this season? Oh, yeah, Jakari. Jakari White, he's stepped out of his shell a lot. You know, he wasn't playing much at the beginning of the year, but now he's just doing a great job defensively, offensively. He's just a great, great teammate. So you are a North Dakota kid. You're from Jamestown. 
big farm in town. Did you do any farming growing up? Uh, in a lot of my family farms, and you know, people people are always like, you know, that doesn't seem like as you, but you know, I got, I got some boots and some cowboy hats, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. We're gonna have to see you break those out at some point. Yeah. Uh, Bowden, you, it's a big weekend for you guys, bouncing back from a two-game loss. What are your expectations for this Friday? You know, just come out here and you know, forget about those losses, and just come out here and get it done the best we can. Yeah, and that was Bowden Scunberg there. Always good to hear from these players. And Logan asked him, how are you going to come out and respond? He said, hey, it's a, it's a game. We've moved on, and we got to come out and play good. And they did that. They took care of business versus UND. Bowden is a, a young man that has grown with this team. What have you seen from his growth, Coach, over the past couple of seasons? I think that's it, Rob. When you, you hit the nail on the head right there when we talk about growth, uh, lo, or excuse me, Bowden is a – a um, very passionate young man. Bowden is a young man that plays with a lot of emotion, and it's been fun to see his maturity, his growth within the program. And I also think at times Bowden is very misunderstood, where uh, you see a lot of that competitive fire, that emotion for 40 minutes on the court. Uh, Bowden is also an extremely pleasant young man to be off off the court, and, and he is uh, very faith-filled um, in, in, his, in his journey that way. Um, is working his tail off in, in the classroom. And so just very pleased with the progress Bowden continues to make within the program. Logan talked to him a lot about just leadership, and that's a word you and I talk about a lot with guys like Grant Nelson and Bowden Scunberg is in that mix as well. How has he really stepped up as a leader, and who's he mentoring? Yeah, Logan and I spoke to it a little bit pregame before the UND game too, where um, you know he, he, he leads in different ways. All, everybody leads in different ways. And, and Bowden's leadership is, is kind of a swag-filled leadership where – uh, guys feed off of his energy, his effort, his emotion, and on both ends of the floor. And uh, he's he's done a tre tremendous job of that. And he understands when some guys are gone that uh, the part of the legacy of Bison basketball is having other guys step up. And uh, for the most part, Bowden's done a really good job of that the, this season for us. You mentioned the energy too. Jakari White's another name that we bring, but how does Bowden Scumberg complement that energy? Well, I think both of those two, and, and our staff will be the first to tell you, like their energy, their their passion, their swag that they play with. Um, our, our guys feed off of this. And you go back and watch the end of the uh, USD game, you know, a game that we're going to go into on Thursday this week, Rob. And, and those two really sparked us defensively, got some key stops down the stretch. And again, that's Bison basketball at its best. And, and, a, lot of, and a lot of that is, is those two leading the charge. Well, coming up this uh, week is Thursday, and then again on Saturday, it is South Dakota, South Dakota State. Looking forward to those two matchups, Coach. I know your guys will be ready to play. And as always, those games, again, you can get tickets, gobison.com. Get out there and look, and it's, it's on the road, so we're going to be back on the road, so looking forward to that. Uh, but again, two big matchups coming up. This will wrap it up. As always, thanks for joining us. We'll end it with the horns up, and go Bison. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life and Pepsi. This has been an exclusive presentation from Learfield. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Teamwork.